Asaf woke up in that psalm and realized that, Whom have I in heaven but you? Earth has nothing I desire besides you. So, really, there's nothing else that matters here on earth. And so far as you have God, you're good. You've, you've arrived. You know what I'm saying? That's what's good. Um, and the wicked, however, are put on slippery paths. These slippery paths are not always um, easily recognizable by the naked eye and that is in order that the deception might continue all the way up until the end of the ages for those who are a wicked and a perverse generation seeking after a sign so people are made to observe that are of the wicked camp or that will eventually join the wicked camp in falling away and partaking in the great apostasy they are made to observe the prosperity of the wicked and so therefore choose it over god it will happen in increasing measure over the years and towards the last days. It's going to be even worse. Why? Because there has to be a great apostasy. Christians have got to believe that God has not answered their prayer. And so turn away from the faith. It's what they will do. They will they will um, be drawn or gravitate towards doctrines of demons and destructive heresies. They will be drawn towards it. So all throughout the ages, we appear to not be getting answered prayer. But God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man to change his mind. So when he says that he's going to give us everything that we need, pressed down, shaken together and running over. When he says he is going to provide for us every last one of our needs according to his riches and glory. And yet we die sometimes either impoverished, half uh, provided for. In other words, we've only gotten like literally a fraction, barely calculable of what it is that we ask for in prayer. Ashamed even to admit that I asked this from God, but he didn't do it for me. And then we appear to be making excuses for God um, as to why it is that something did not work out. You know, maybe God has his own way, like, you know, the wisdom of the Lord. And we, we really just try and find a way to explain away our lack of answered prayer and that is a righteous act why because rather than blaspheme god and say that he has gone against his word we would much rather come up with all different kinds of our own doctrines or theories as to why under heaven it is that our prayers are not answered but i am here to you know pro pro produce a counter argument as to even the excuses that christians are making for god these excuses of which are also a stronger delusion sent even to the wicked that we we, we are going to get to a point in the last days as it is written in god's word in the book of daniel where we unravel even the mystery of an answered prayer because sound doctrine and bible prophecy as it gets fulfilled evidences the reason even for an answered prayer it is because it is getting answered by it not being answered in a way that is going to cut off the wicked think about um i believe it is psalm 37 the bible says that the wicked are going to be cut off from the land cut off from the land how many of y'all got some wicked people cut off yeah you cut one off they're like uh the 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 what is this the um, the, the the tail of a lizard donkey son the wicked's insanity is like the tail of a lizard you cut one off and another one grows you cut one off and another one grows you can never really rid society of wicked men and women the the one witch in the community that gets burnt at the stake tomorrow they were their great grandchild is going to do a strange thing tomorrow you are gonna find the person that continues a legacy. Think about Nazism, for instance. Hitler and his regime were dissolved, but not before first like hooking up a whole bunch of base camps of Nazism across the planet. There isn't a single country in the earth today that does not have some kind of a Nazi influence in it. So the dude was a lizard whose tail was cut, but it kept growing and growing and growing. So when the scriptures say the wicked shall be cut off, it appears as if though God has not uh, like um, provided that promise. He has not answered that promise. There's still a violent amount of anti-Semitism despite neutraliz neutralizing. There was still a violent amount of Christian persecution despite the one dude that keeps on burning churches in and of himself passing away. The Bible says the wicked shall be cut off. However, the righteous will what? They will inherit the land. Here is and herein lies the strong delusion. The strong delusion is the lack of answered prayer. Saints dying without answered prayer. Only for them to do what? Thank you. A wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign. That's what the Bible says. But they will be given no sign. So ever since pretty much the Son of Man was born, died, and got resurrected and ascended, people, and maybe even before then, looking towards the cross and then looking back at it now too, people have been defying the body of Christ based on what appears to be Christ's inability to keep his own promises. It looks as if though he is way in on or on his over his head inundated with all these problems of the wicked on the earth and he can't get to every last one of them but the lord made it clear when he was here in prophesying he said a wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign but i will not give them a sign what is the sign that they're looking for they want to prove that god is real because they want to see that christians survive their witchcraft so you cast 20 spells 
on a Christian and you expect her to survive all 20, but God makes her plummet and plunge under 18 of them and then delivers her only from two. And then that makes you think that, that your devil is stronger. God said, I'm not going to give you a sign. I'm not going to give you deliverance of my Christian. I am not going to function like a magician, okay? Where it is that you cast a spell and you think we're on equal playing ground. So I cast one back and we fight in the cosmos. I'm sorry. No, I'm God. I am the creator. So I am going to hand you over to your witchcraft. You will do it until you die. Because you were given my invisible qualities. You were also given your conscience. You were given your guilt. You were given your disquiet, the ramifications of your actions. There was so much that slapped you that suggested that this thing does not pay off. Plus, your participating, participation in the mutiny against the earth by using spirits evidenced that there, there is a spiritual extra, extraness about this earth. It is not mere flesh and blood that exists. You have dabbled with spirits evidencing that there is a spirit realm. Meaning you had a responsibility to investigate the fullness of that spirit realm. Meaning you had a responsibility once you found out that there was a devil to find out if at all there is a God. And given that you were naive enough to only look out at, at one side of this coin, you deserve then to worship the one side that condemns eternally. I will not give you answered prayer. I will not give my Christians deliverance from you, not all of them. I will give enough of them deliverance in order to have their testimonies rescue uh, people who are not wicked and perverse. But I will not give them a comprehensive deliverance so that you as a witch might be convinced that I am Lord. Because I will speak to you in parables so you don't understand. Lest you should gauge what I'm saying and then be saved. I don't want you to get saved. Because at this point, you have sold your, uh, what do you call this thing? Your, your, your inheritance for a piece of bread because your name is Esau. And so Jacob I have loved while Esau I have hated. You have grabbed what I have given you from birth to run with and so inherit eternal life with it and sold it for two million dollars per annum you have sold your soul for a salary of two to three million dollars per annum made yourself a witch enabled others to decimate the earth went and gave nba players their contracts in um sport prided yourself in being on par with beyonce and so for those reasons i will give you your two million dollars salary per annum while the christian that 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 you keep on bewitching keeps to fall under seven out of ten of the spells you send her I will literally make it look as if though I'm just that sky daddy that don't answer prayer. You are wicked, you are perverse, I will speak to you in parables that you do not understand so that you may stay lost and never turn around and be healed. Why? I will do that to you because you have not loved the truth, taken pleasure in your unrighteousness and you have allowed your conscience to be seared and having practiced all the sorcery all these years to a point where even though you had a, a strong gut feeling that what you're doing is going to condemn you, you carried on anyway because all you are running with is the love of money, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, this world. You ran with it, even though I raised you in the admonition of me. I raised you in the scriptures. I raised you through a grandmother that prays, and then you turned into a witch. Fine. Do you, Hamba? I will not give you a sign. I will not let you see deliverance of enough Christians for you to be convinced as a witch that this does not pay. I will only snatch a handful of you out from the kingdom of darkness, but the rest of you, I'm going to allow you to deceive people with all different kinds of signs and counterfeit um, miracles. I will allow you to go on right ahead and counterfeit my power in the kingdom of darkness, and you will thrive and you will spread fat. You will become sleek. You will g grow old and on your deathbed, you will be encircled by grandchildren and great grandchildren and everybody telling you they love you. I will let you get old and fat and sleek while my Christians get martyred across the world, while they struggle and they live in poverty, while their Bibles underneath their children's beds don't rescue those children from death, while they struggle to get help, while they struggle to get money. I will allow you to suffer my children through prophesied sorrow because I told them that you will suffer much in this world. You will have many troubles, but take heart. I have overcome the world. My kids have been warned and advanced to count the cost of being a disciple i've told them they're going to suffer so they're going to take it in their stride when you mistreat them precisely because it looks like i'm not looking out for them but i will not give you the sign i will not give you garabo's deliverance do you understand a wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign but from the very beginning i prophesied it before it even happened i won't give it to them all i will give them is the appearance of failure of Christians. I will give them a dwindling Christian population on the earth over the ages. I will give them a lukewarm conglomerate. I will give them an apostate church. I will give them a synagogue that kicks you out, thinking they're doing a service to God, John 16. I will give you witches, a, hypoc a hypocritical 
in the body of Christ where a whole bunch of people who profess me with their lips have got their hearts very far away from me and my true servants, my true saints will be so scattered and so few and far between that when they speak, no one hears, no one listens to them and in the increasing measure, it's going to be an issue to bring about their voices to the forefront. They will be unsung heroes until they die, many of them. However, many of them as well will I allow to be um, evangelists and what do you call this thing? reformers many of them i will allow them to be revivalists but there will be others that will literally just wither away in the darkness speaking and speaking and speaking and trying to evangelize and not get heard these people are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven albeit being the least on earth you will look at them and imagine yourself as prosperous as a witch who has bewitched the living dead out of my child until she lost everything or until he lost everything i will give you no sign from karabo other than the sign of jonah she will be swallowed in the belly of a fish for three days she will be in the heart of the earth like a son a man for three days in other words she will just merely disappear from society because you bewitched the living daylights out of her she will just disappear but you must understand that in her disappearance that is your season your time and your chance to repent because once she gets resurrected it's over for you when she gets resurrected when she gets vomited out of the belly of a fish as jonah she will preach to nineveh and when she gets resurrected out of the heart of the earth as the son of man she will be she will appear to many and it will be clear that at the resurrection all christians cleared because it meant that we are now free indeed we are now free indeed once we get resurrected the dead are eternally condemned the devil is judged he is finished off his case is annihilated he is no longer one who has got any kind of argument at all the advocacy for the devil has ceased to be the case has been won by the kingdom of heaven therefore the only opportunity you have as a wish to repent is your guilty conscience the observation of the fallenness of the life that you have created around you the fact that you don't have family members anymore the fact that you don't have anybody you love around you anymore the fact that people you trusted loved and adored you have literally be wished out of a lifestyle you have sentenced people to live a life of while you get to be the only one spending your two million dollars per annum that's what's good where is your best friend from high school where is your daughter where is your etc i could go on that is all you get your conscience and the invisible qualities of god you have known the truth but rather took pleasure in your unrighteousness but you will not be given every anything but if you don't repent by the time the resurrection happens that's when the wicked get cut off my dear that's when they get cut off. That's when the head of the serpent gets cut off. That's when the whole lizard gets splattered with a shoe instead of it growing a tail back. Hmm. At the resurrection, we cheer. So the Lord has allowed lots of Christians to basically die without answered prayer, especially in persecuting countries where they could never, ever get a hundredfold over that which they asked for. Mothers, fathers, brothers, fields, homes, etc. I could go on. Children and lands. Yeah, they don't get it. So it looks like God has just completely ignored prayers. Like me, for instance, I even like jotted down with bullet points and everything what I wanted in God. And I sent a letter to heaven. Do you seriously think that my, my basically like little pamphlet, a novel, mini book, mini like prayer book that I sent to heaven for all the things that I wanted from the Lord? Do you seriously think he's just kind of disregarded that or he's so inundated with paperwork, inundated with paperwork in heaven? That he can't quite get to the prayers that I prayed. And so by the time he gets to them, Karabo has like turned 40. Is that what you think God is doing? You think God has just forgotten to get to my particular prayer? He's too busy. Mm, that's what people are at your imaginative is going on. You're wicked. You're perverse. You seek after a sign. God will only allow Karabo to look and prosperous. Just like that mama of that 19 year old dead girl who was poor like no man's business neighbors would not help her along she sought the lord's face to rescue her child and all of her community imagined your daughter how long you gonna pray for this daughter of yours it's this child is just inevitably gonna die and the kid did die but the lord did what had mercy on who the mom that prayer was heard all along by god but the lord knew that that kid if that child had survived just kind of been given an antibiotic and lived that kid would never turn to christ the lord heard the mother's prayers for the salvation of the daughter and understood that this kid was going to be reprobate for the rest of her life unless she got shown eternity in a sick state such that when the, he finally answered the mother's prayer just like with lazarus to bring forth a dead person it will be for the purposes of the lord so with the with the whole death of lazarus there was a question asked in the scriptures why did you allow lazarus to die why didn't you just rescue him or something along those lines 
And God says that for the very purpose of me raising him from the dead, something along those lines. In other words, there was a purpose for Lazarus to die, that the Lord might display that he can resurrect. So there was a purpose for that girl to die, that the Lord might evidence to her that she is lost. And that was it not for her mother's prayers. I don't eat evidencing that her mother has something to do with her safety. And so what is the thing that differentiates the mother from her? Her walk with Jesus. Her walk with Jesus. So this young woman gave her life to Jesus precisely because she saw that even though she was poor, even though her mother was impoverished, the whole family was suffering. There was a God heeding prayers. The Lord showed that young woman, her mother, that he cared about enough to save her. She was utterly cut off from the Lord, but the mother wasn't. So was her mother's prayer, were her mother's prayers unanswered to get out of that poverty, to take her daughter to the hospital? No, the Lord was just doing it in his own way. And in his season, he will then grant wealth to, to those who were incredibly poor. Those who were least on earth are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And those who are the greatest are least. And those who are the greatest on earth are least in the kingdom of heaven. How in the world then do you account for all of this un unsaid prayer? Like but with people looking at me like I've got this like sky daddy that is a joke. <laughs> yeah. mm. Guys, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like wind. You might not see it, but you know it's there. Being born again, I, I like to say to people, you got to be there to get it. You got to be there to get it. Indeed, by the Holy Spirit, how do you be there? You are there by the Holy Spirit. So unless the Father draws you to the Son, you just ain't going to get it. The things of God are foolishness to the man who is perishing. So the, the, the fervency, the, the latching on to Jesus by Christians is, is a hard thing for people to understand because we hold on to a God that appears to just be abusing us with sorrow, with, 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 um, with um, obscurity and poverty and uh, disease and all these things that he says he's going to heal and then he doesn't heal them. We appear to be out of our minds dealing with what you call a sky daddy. Except, like I said, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. It is written indeed in God's word that it is like the wind. When Nicodemus asks Jesus, what must I do um, in order to, I guess, inherit eternal life? And he tells Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. Because unless a person is born of the Spirit and of uh, water, they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Types it up thing. And then he goes on to describe the Holy Spirit being like the wind. That even though you can't see the wind, you know it's there. Why? Because you see the effects of the wind. Why? Because the trees are blowing, the, the, the leaves are moving. So invisible as that wind might be, it is there because you can see the evidence of the wind being in the room. So um, the only way that a person can really truly see God is by conviction of the Holy Spirit. You, you got to be there. Like it's one of those. It's like a, an inside joke. The Holy Spirit is probably like an inside joke. You, you, you had to have been there. Otherwise, it just, you know, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. You're not going to understand it unless you get tugged away by the wind. The wind has got to be given you. The Father has got to draw you by the wind, who is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that you might get why we labor so much for a God that appears to not be answering our prayers. And then now let's get to the, 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 the leading by the Holy Spirit in an anointed fashion, unravel the scriptures until we even understand why it is that we had to make excuses for God for why he didn't answer our prayers. We realize now that we didn't make excuses. We just didn't understand the Bible until now. For the things of God will unravel and unfold incrementally in piecemeal fashion all the way up until the end. Until it finally just dawns on every last one of us. Why even that prayer I prayed in 1992 wasn't answered? Because we are so close to the rapture of, of, by, of the body of Christ that we're about to experience every last answered prayer that we ever prayed. But not first before. The prayers that the wicked offended the body of Christ and thus God for being unanswered. Not before those prayers get used as a judgment on the earth. In Revelation 8. In Revelation 8. The Lord says, I will say it again. A wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign and they will not be given any other than the disappearance. So our disappearance is you bewitch me and I truly lose my job. Oh, look at you, witchy, be successful. Mm. So deliverance ministers who also believe that they can deliver everybody out of poverty. Goodness gracious. Like it is not guaranteed that every last one of us will be rich. There are Christians that have died poor. The one of which is this woman in this testimony that I am busy telling you right now that passed away. However, she was rich in Christ. So rich that she was regarded enough for God to show her dead daughter, her mom. Because that is who God is looking at with gladness and not so much the daughter. So on behalf of the mom, did the daughter now survive? Do you understand? When we are poor, we are rich. When we are weak, we are strong in Jesus Christ. Our wealth is in Christ. Build, gather for yourself. 
It is written in God's word, treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not come in and steal. That is what the Bible says. But people of this world gather for themselves treasure right here on the earth like that foolish rich man. Bonds upon bonds of, 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 of money, like $2 million per annum. That's what you pride yourself in, being a witch, a little sangoma in the United States of America. Yeah, you pride yourself in that. Uh, but that is something that the whole earth is going to steal, take away from you. Because the day is going to arrive when the earth is going to be rolled out, out of the way like a scroll. Do you understand? The, the earth is going to flee from the sight of God. The, the heavens and the earth are going to flee from the sight of God. And then next thing, the great white throne judgment is going to happen. And here it is that the, this money that is an, an innovation, an invention, a construct of mankind that you pride yourself in being successful because of having, it'll flee with that earth. With that earth at Revelation 22, but not before first, you getting ransacked by the prayers you underestimated in Revelation 8. The Bible says, um, with this wicked and perverse generation seeking after a sign, thingy Bobby. Okay, that particular um of scripture, the whole world is going to be deceived with a Christian persecution. That's the strong delusion. That's the disappearance. The whole world is going to be deceived by Christian unanswered prayer. The whole world is going to be deceived. By the Christian God appearing inundated with earth's affairs and unable therefore to intervene. The Bible, the world is going to be deceived by wickedness thriving above righteousness all the way up until there has been such a great falling away and such a severe persecution of Christians on the earth that he who is unseen and therefore helps people get it, the Holy Spirit, will be taken out of the way. That would be the rapture saints. And then there will be a falling away, a great falling away. And this will then bring about the most evil time in the human race called the tribulation with your antichrist. That is now the God in the flesh that you've longed after. Our God is invisible. It is written that it is impossible to please God without faith. Meaning that you've got to believe in that which you don't see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you don't believe by faith, you're worthless. You're a waste of time and you can never please God. But you're going to have a God on earth by the name of the Antichrist. He is the final outworking demon worship. All these people who consult mediums in order to see, see, see. They, they want to see to believe. So now you're going to be given a God that performs miracles and you can see him. You can spot him. You can touch him. You can pinch him. His name is the Antichrist. The be all and end all of culmination of a lack of faith is having a God you can see that's not invisible. And you're going to be given him. His name is the Antichrist. But first, the true God's people got to be taken out of the way. And the spirit that convicts will no longer be ubiquitously hovering uh, above the earth, convicting men of sin, but will be in individual disciples that will be getting drawn to God. Um, the, the, the presence of Christianity and Christians will be taken out of the way. But God himself is omnipresent, so he can never truly be out of the way. But he will be bringing some um, to him. Because those will be people that will be the equivalent or tantamount of Thomas, who are given the holes in the hands of the Son of Man because they would not believe without seeing. Blessed are you when you believe and not and have not seen. Uh, God says to Thomas, Jesus, you believe because you have not seen. But blessed are you when you believe when you uh, blessed are you if when you believe without seeing. Blessed are you who believe without seeing. Yeah, something of that nature. Yeah, that's what's good. So we, as the body of Christ prior to the rapture, believe without seeing. But those saints that will get born again in the tribulation will believe because they were given the holes in the hands of the Son of Man. But theirs is going to be a tumultuous season. They're going to endure a lot. They're going to endure a lot. And then the rest of the world will choose to still do exactly what it is that the world has been doing all along. Believe only because they see. So they will worship the Antichrist. They will worship a mere mortal they can touch, pinch, a mere mortal they can uh, shoot, and he will have a mortal wound that will be healed. You will see the God that you've wanted to see, but not before you find not He will be the first seeing is believing that you will be given. And then ultimately you will be given the real deal who is Jesus Christ. So how in the world then is God going to answer all of our prayers? The millennial reign of Jesus Christ is how it is possible for Mark 10 to be answered. Mark 10 is that passage of scripture where it is written that if anybody has left houses, fields, children, lands, mothers, sisters, brothers, they will gain 100 fold over all that which they have lost with persecutions and in the next life, eternal life. They will in this life gain mother's fields, etc. with persecutions and in the next life, eternal life. Well, those people who don't believe in dispensationalism, there is no more convicting passage of God's word of dispensationalism than that. Because it suggests that in this lifetime, we're going to acquire everything we want, but there must be a different dispensation operating for it to be possible for us to inherit all that. 
It is impossible for Christians to live a thriving, prosperous, beautiful life on an earth with this much resistance. And the resistor of our souls is the devil and the demons all over the show and the wickedness that is allowed to thrive because it has not seen Jesus for real. They seek after a sign, but they will not be given that sign other than the sign of Jonah, the disappearance, and then the resurrection, and then the ascension. So you have got to see the resurrection. Long story short, you have to observe as an earth citizenship. First the rapture, then your ransacking, and then those of you who have not basically taken the mark of the beast because you would much rather see a God to believe in him, then only will you get to see the one true God roaming these streets, literally sitting flesh, his body, his physical body hanging out in Jerusalem. The, the, the Jesus himself will land on the Mount of Olives in the second coming and rule and reign for 1000 years. Then on that day, you will not be able for crying out loud to just unfettered do witchcraft. You will not be able for crying out loud to just unfettered fornicate. The earth is not going to be as wicked anymore. Because those who will have survived the tribulation and not taken the mark of the beast will have done so precisely because of an observation they made, thanks to the sorrow that they now endure through the tribulation, that the real God is the real deal. And you will see him at the second coming. And he will, by the breath of his mouth, decimate that army of Armageddon and kill the anti- take the now. He was, he's not going to kill the Antichrist. He's going to take him alive with the prophet, with the false prophet and throw him into the lake of fire in front of everybody. And so the God that will have been worshipped will be the first to go to hell. And all of his servants will be killed at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And everybody else that remains will worship him. They will bow down. And that is how the wicked get cut off. That is how the wicked cut off. The Bible says that the wicked will be cut off, but the righteous will inherit the land. In Matthew 5 and the Beatitudes, it is written that the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundant peace. So when does that happen? When do you inherit a hundredfold over mothers, brothers, sisters, lands, fields, children, and pers with persecutions in this life? This life is right now as we're living. In the next life, we have eternal life. Long story short, when we've inherited incorruptible bodies, we've either died or we've gotten raptured. The, the, the next life is eternity. The millennial reign is not the equivalent or the tantamount of eternity because it is a continuing present earth. So it is still this age. That's why dispensationalism is, I believe, just all of it sealed and marked in because it says that everybody that has ever lost all of these things for the sake of the kingdom of heaven will gain them 100 fold over quite literally the scriptures we have come to learn as the body of Christ that even though have tried to allegorize or metaphorize them all throughout the ages as the years progress we come to learn that they're quite literal so even the 100 fold over inheritance of that which you have lost is literal now that we are so close to the end it appears to be literal because the only way you can gain a hundred fold over of mothers and children that you have lost is if you are living for literally 10 times the, the the lifespan of a normal human being long story short a thousand years if you are in an incorruptible body then you don't die at all but you get to inherit right here in this world 100 fold over that which you have lost 100 fold 100 fold over of houses is unattainable if at all you've lost your house even by the grandest of millionaires or billionaires because there's only so much time that we have to acquire earth's assets unless of course you're methuselah you're not dying if you're methuselah and you're living at the age of 1000 Honey, then you get to have a hundred extra houses from the one that you lost in 1992. That's how you inherit 100 fold over that which you have lost, which is why I thoroughly believe that I'm getting my husband and my children in the millennial reign because I lost them on this side. How in the world am I going to get a hundred children? Well, I mean, if you give birth one kid every 10 years, that's a hundred kids. I thoroughly believe Christians that have got incorruptible bodies are going to be like Adam and Eve prior to the fall they will be able to give birth to babies have children have perfect marriages with no adultery and have give birth to children as women without childbirth labor pains and without aging basically god is about to give christians the life that adam and eve would have lived if they did not sin if at all god did not finish what he started with adam and eve to show human beings who were created in his image to live on an earth and occupy it the eden without the fall he would not finish his job the lord has got to show us what eden without the fall looks like because going to heaven the eternal final space that we all go to can never fulfill eden what god was trying to do in eden the Lord does not ever basically f full stop. Like whatever it is that he's intending to do, he always finishes it. So the Adam and Eve thing was stopped. Gee, dead in his tracks because they fell. But there must be a time coming 
where the Lord is going to finish what he started with Adam and Eve to show us what the earth would have, would, would have looked like if they did not sin. How Adam and Eve would have continued planting, you know, living among animals, the lion and the lamb will lie next to each other. Basically, Adam and Eve's existence is realistic in the millennial reign but for the denial by christians that we are going to get to have children animals are going to be restored to what they used to be prior to the fall where it is that they were no longer they were not hunting each other for food they were eating the grass for food a uh, type setup thing why would the lion and the lamb lie next to each other while we don't get to be like adam and eve i believe it is a recreation of eve eden but for only the ones who have got the incorruptible body in order to basically judge those that rejected christ however also rejected the antichrist but then eventually embraced christ that they might be judged to see what they missed out on that they might get old while we stay young and that we might give birth without stretch marks without childbirth and that we might have marriages that are perfect without adultery without cheating without spouses their eyes ogling over at other people while a mother looks exactly the same age as her daughter at some point and never ever ages so you get to basically be a great 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 grandmother of a kid that looks exactly your age the exactly the experience that eve and adam would have had if they had not fallen i believe with every bone in my body that god is going to bring that back because like i said the devil put a damper and a, a cessation of that particular utopia on eden back then he put the cessation on that utopia but the devil does not stop anything that god starts otherwise he would have prospered to conquer a perfect earth or a perfect human race that is bringing forth children that are perfect in the sight of the Lord that never sin. If the devil could stop it, it must mean that the Lord intended to finish it off at some point. So how then do we gain 100 fold over that which we lost? Precisely that way, the millennium, in the millennial reign. So the 17 year old girl that passes away from leukemia in 1902, having prayed for her husband, yet never got it, asked the Lord to save her, put her in remission because my goodness, why in the world must I get cancer when I've got all of my life ahead of me? Praise to God. God does not give her what she asked for in prayer. It appears that she got no answered prayer until she comes back resurrected at the trumpet blast, boom, 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 the dead in Christ rise first. And then we who, we who are alive and remain will be caught up with the Lord to meet him in the air, in the sky, that we might be with him forever and ever. Uh, types it up thing so she will be the first to rise the 17 year old girl and she will have finished her growing up in heaven etc she will have an incredible body and then once the lord has packed up and cleaned up after the second coming and the earth is looking better she will marry she will get the husband she will get the children and she will live a perfect existence and so everything she asked for in prayer gets given her what does she ask the lord cure my cancer because i want a child i want children i want to get married i want a future i want to build houses i have got so many dreams yeah everything you ask for in prayer it'll be given you otherwise the scripture that is the only way that the bible can be fulfilled guys if you think about it it's the only way that the bible can successfully be true all of it because there are way too many christians that have passed away without answered prayer for the bible to be true and the law says he's a man he's not a man that he should lie son a man to change his mind that he's an errant he's immutable and so therefore when he says ask anything in my name and you will get it and then you ask and you don't get it must mean there must be some other time when he's intending to give you exactly what you ask for in prayer so women that did not get husbands jeremiah who longed and desired the law says commit your ways to me and i will give you the desires of your heart jeremiah desired a wife but the law said you can't marry not, not you not you come i don't want you to take a wife but the jeremiah back then could not have been told exactly what's going to happen why because it was not your time the, the things of the future would only be unsealed much later and only christians in the very last days will be able to figure these things out and unravel them open them so when will jeremiah be able to therefore get his desires met because he committed his ways to the lord he did and yet he was a weeping prophet all the prophets of god that suffered very uh heavily unable to died basically martyrs deaths never really getting much of their fill of joy it says the scriptures were not fulfilled in their lifetime in this age you will inherit all of these things so i do believe men like jeremiah will be able to get wives in the millennial reign because it was his desire it made him mourn when the lord told him that he can't get a wife but he obeyed god so what will be his reward a perfect 10 essentially a perfect 10 like a proper perfect 10 where this time he doesn't have to strive against people who will not heed his po his prophecies he will not have to strive with um jehoiakim and kings you know tearing up his, his uh, uh, prophecies with baruch he will not have to strive with that he will no longer be the weeping prophet anymore and so now he will be able to be a dad now he will be able to be a husband he will be able to be all that he wants to be absent of that being accurate or true guys the bible cannot possibly be true all of it if at all all answered prayer does not get given us 
it is impossible therefore for us to call it the inerrant word of god the only thing that makes sense is the millennial reign it literally is it, it makes sense that god should recreate an eden because the devil cut us short and the devil never ever gets to fin to stop anything that god is doing so we are going to be adam and eve without the fall the incorruptible bodies that can have babies that can do all that the Cain and the Abel that gets born without corruption the brother and the sister pair that don't have sibling rivalry we're gonna give birth to them and guys I've already uh I touched on this in the past Jeremiah not Jeremiah is it Isaiah 23 uh it speaks to this um particular thing and I do believe more and more people will come forward and basically uh, uh, co uh confess this or prophesy it or reveal it to but it's something that I have seen for a very long time and I'm often very scared to speak about it because it might come across as heresy. But it, it to me, it just it makes more and more sense precisely because the devil can never ever conquer God. And it appears as if though he, has, he had conquered the perfection that he created in Adam and Eve, if at all God does not redo that somewhere. And also the unanswered prayers. For me, it is the unanswered prayers of Christians. The martyrs. The martyrs. For me, it is the martyrs. The, the people who went and um, who were living in countries that were so hostile that they couldn't live their full Christian lifestyle what in the world under heaven it, it, it can account for their unanswered prayer people who had hopes they were just severed cut short it, it appears as if though we were not heard so so the life that i live with all of this barrenness and this destitution i believe the reason why i, I stay so strong in what it is that i'm holding on to is because i thoroughly comprehend myself as an immortal being already that i'm just at the very beginning like the very like start the the incredible start of my life i'm my, i'm 39 but i feel like i'm 17 where i have a future where i'm going to meet a man one day get married and start a business and do a thing and take kids to church raise them up in the admonition of the lord watch my kids get married um you know watch my kids start legacies become presidents of the country i feel like i'm a young girl in high school still dreaming about a future and so i'm in no rush i'm in no rush what 17 year old is is like calculating or looking at their biological clock and some oh my goodness no i better fall pregnant next thing i should out you in these streets never ever be able to have a baby no when you're 16 when you're 17 when you're 15 you you feel like you've got time the next 10 years ain't jack if you are not married in, in the next five years you're not in a rush i feel that way i thoroughly feel that way i feel like a teenage girl that that really there is no rush i still gotta finish school i still have to go to university then maybe when i turn 24 i, I might start to you know mm, you know posture myself in a particular way in church so that a man can look at me with, eh, eh, dotingly and then pursue me that's how i feel i'm not perturbed i'm not disturbed i'm not uh harassed by the years that are progressing by turning 40 like i literally do not care because i feel like a teenager because i am at the beginning of my life i am at the beginning of my eternal life i do not believe i'm gonna die because the lord has shown me that suicide is going to pursue me all the way up until the rapture evidencing that people want to snuff my life short and take the promise away from me i am going to be caught up in the sky with the lord to meet the lord in the air others will be resurrected but i will go up in the sky i have been told by the lord multiple times through the a word of knowledge that i'm like methuselah in other words a person that lives to a, the, the age of 1000 i'm not even like methuselah i'm beyond that in the sense that once you inherit an incorruptible body you are beyond methuselah because you are eternally unaging you're forever here but the lord uses methuselah to help me understand that i'm still gonna be here on this earth for another thousand years and i mean if i'm 40 years old methuselah lived to be what 900 and what like is a 67 or what right that's how old methuselah was so if god is calling me, if god is calling me methuselah he's basically saying you and your 39 years of age legs you're methuselah long story short you're still gonna be on the earth for another thousand years you're still gonna be here for another 1000 years you're gonna see this you are never gonna die you're gonna watch the earth from the sky for a brief season during the tribulation then you're gonna come back down and roam these streets a thousand more years so if you're methuselah why are you worrying about your biological clock at the age of 39 relax take a breather inhale and exhale do not allow the fleeting pleasures of this world to trouble you when they're not in your life because you're methuselah i do believe that this is coming so when people gaze upon an answered prayer in the life of a christian that's the strong delusion you've been sent you're dealing with methuselah you're dealing with a person that might look 39 on the outside but essentially in spiritual terms and in eternal terms they might as well be five years old because that's how eternal they are 
they're still going to be living for a very long amount of time. People are going to be regressed back to their youthful stature who have like lived to the age of 80, 67. They're going to be young again, looking even younger than me. They're going to gain all of their youth back. And that's what's going to handle the wicked, the wicked who repent. Because the wicked who do not repent are not even going to be here to be handled. They will be handled by Sheol. They will be handled by Hades because the wicked are going to be cut off. So the rapture is going to be given to people. The disappearance of Christians, long story short, you wicked and perverse generation, that's all you get, the rapture. And if you don't repent because of the rapture, if you don't repent and you rather take the mark of the beast, that's it for you. Because when the resurrection happens, when the, the, the ascension, the equivalent or tenement of the ascension in this instance would be Christ coming down to the earth with the saints to rule and reign for 1000 years, you're not going to be here. The wicked are going to be cut off. That's what the Bible says. But the righteous will inherit the land. We inherit the land. And only when there is no wickedness, when the devil has been bound in chains for 1,000 years, are we going to finally be able to plant vineyards and have no one steal them. It's written in God's word that not, not again in this party, in this era, in this reign, um, in this dispensation, no one will plant a vineyard and not eat of the grapes themselves. Long story short, you're no longer going to be slaving, working for somebody else without... Uh, gaining the fruit of your labor you are no longer going to till a vineyard and not be the one to eat those grapes not only eat those grapes but also the pro the, the the profits the proceeds of selling those grapes so the same person that is working the vineyard is going to own the vineyard and gain the proceeds no more exploitation uh child labor or um underpaid and overworked all that stuff it's not it's not happening anymore so in Twiki Yetzang this thing that I do with all this work that I produce never again it's never gonna happen again like this whole thing of you working like a dog grinding and then having a witch just steal your star having a witch just steal your destiny steal your womb struggling to per, per, what is this conceive none of that all of this stuff of usage of demonic entities in order to acquire what people want it's coming to a blistering end the millennial reign is not millennial reign, sorry, but the tribulation is the last time that witches are going to be able to do witchcraft. It is indeed written in God's word that when he is busy sending down plagues on the earth, they neither repent from their sorceries and their fornications and their idolatries, etc. So the last time that they have to have a part A with their sorcery, their magic wands, their impepo, their little calabashes, their death um, rituals, their human sacrifices, their drinking of blood. The last time they'll be able to do this is the tribulation. They will have their fill of demonic worship up until the devil, the one who enables this power to even operate in the first place, is bound in chains with all of these demons for a thousand years. And the wicked are thrown into she Sheol, Hades, all of y'all that take the mark of the beast. You will be thrown into Sheol. You are not even going to get to be like, Jesus, please, sir, can we need nothing? You will not be able to negotiate. You will be straight sent to hell there and then. The remaining people on the earth, however, the Lord will then make a decision as to whether they get to stay or go. Those that go, Hamban, and then those that stay, they're going to have to keep themselves in a bunch. They're going to have to be neat, and they are going to watch glorious beings walking around in incorruptible bodies, living lives that they could have had, but they passed that, but that they passed up on. That's coming. And in that millennial reign, finally then, we are going to be given houses, fields, children, lands, mothers, brothers, sisters. And remember, the persecutions were already, they, they, they were in the church dispensation and backward. The persecutions were pretty much all of the age of God gathering for himself a people before he ruled and reigned righteously for 1,000 years. So he says that in this lifetime, you're going to gain all of these things, mothers, fathers, children, lands, with persecutions. So the persecutions are now. This is what I'm going through. I am gaining persecutions right now. I've lost fields. I've lost homes. I've lost mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, etc. I've lost children. I've lost lands. I've lost husband. I've lost all that. But all it appears that I have gained is persecutions. It looks as if though all, like God has not answered my prayer, like, like God has persecuted me himself. Like he's just ignored my prayer. And left me in poverty and squalor to suffer like no man's business with no answered prayer. And people are looking at the time on some TikTok, TikTok biological clock. She's almost 40. What in the world is she still waiting on God for? She's arrogant. According to God, I might as well be two years old. I might as well be still in my mother's womb. Do you understand? The way I am so yet to live. I am yet to live. All I've gained since coming to Christ are persecutions. Very little answered prayer. It appears my God is nowhere. And that, oh dear witches, is your strong delusion.
That is the deception. That is the thing that is going to make you believe that there is no God. The thing that's going to keep you looting and looting and looting and looting. Taking people's destinies, futures, degrees, husbands, wives. Uh, love spells, love curses. All You're going to keep doing that. All the way up until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Some of y'all will repent. But a lot of y'all will go to the abyss having trusted a mere mortal to be your God. And you will observe him getting thrown into the lake of fire with the false prophet at the second coming of Jesus Christ. You will then go to Hades. After that, the remaining lot will bow down. They will calm down. They will chill. They will believe. They will honor the Lord. And they will observe people with incorruptible bodies living the lives that they wish they had. So don't speak too soon. All of y'all who are looking at me thinking that my prayers are not answered. When I was listening to that testimony of that young lady who passed away and then came back the lord brought her back she it was hours that had progressed ever since she was uh sent to the eternal plane and then the lord brought her back to life again so it was a miracle basically that happened she should not have lived she was dead for hours she should have been brain damaged but she came back all good and well the mother's poverty is what a lot of people observe in this waking plane here on earth they look at the mother's poverty and they like Begu holding on to a Bible, putting a Bible underneath her daughter's uh, pillow when she's sleeping at night, so that God can rescue her. Uh, do fasting, basically doing anything at all that she can to get answered prayer from God. This is a woman that has sent up prayers to heaven for decades, and it appears as if though the Lord God Almighty has not heard her. He's kept her in poverty. She's living in a one room, uh, in, in 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 a room with five other people with a sixth husband and four kids four kids like six people living in one room mother and father sleep on the bed kids sleep on the floor struggling to pay rent daughter falls sick nobody wants to help out that looks like an abandoned people that looks like a forsaken people but the law says he will never leave nor forsake us he says nothing at all in all of creation will ever separate us from the love of god neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor principalities nothing no poverty no riches can ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And the love of God in Christ was evidenced by him delivering a family from tragedy because the mother prayed and he was like, I will give you this one in this world. You will not lose this child, not this child. You will gain a hundredfold over all the children that you lose indeed. But this one, I won't let you lose her. You're going to get her back after hours of being dead. Here it is that a wealthy woman, greatest in the kingdom of heaven is so poor on earth, so poor. That all she leant on in order to save her daughter was not a doctor, but God. And the Lord brought the child. And the kid now today is a Jesus worshiper. She is a Christian. She's a saint. She will get resurrected. She will go in the rapture if she's still alive at that date. And the mom will be resurrected. I do believe her mom has ever since then passed away. So it paid off. She's wealthy today. In heaven, she is glorious. She's among those beautiful voices that were singing. She was shown the broad road. She was shown hell and heaven. She was shown everything. And she was shown the deliverance power of a Christian's prayers. So those of y'all who underestimate the, um, what do you call this thing? The, um, the restrainer who is the Holy Spirit, us, your underestimation of our prayers, how much we actually truly stand in the gap for you, how many of y'all's lives are actually say, have, are, are still thriving because of us. My whole family should be dead by now. And when I tell you this, one day you will find out this is true because at the great white throne judgment, all things will be revealed. My entire family, my older sister, my mom, and my little sister should all be dead by now because death curses have come at all of them. They have tried to induce so much tragedy in my life that I would stop working by killing my baby sister. They have tried to induce so much suffering and poverty and having no one for me to lean on in my life so that I will down tools on Jesus Christ by trying to kill my mother. They have also, my sister, my older sister has once upon a time been so depressed that she wanted to commit suicide and I stood in the gap for her. My mom has been targeted for a death curse. My younger sister has been targeted for a death curse to get at me. And my older sister has survived suicide ideation because of me. My whole family is alive today because of me. So you, you don't understand just what it is that we are as the restrainer. Guess what the thing that rescued my older sister from suicide was, just by the way. I've been fighting with my family for years on some, you treat me like rubbish, nonsense, stop it. I don't like it. Okay, I've been fighting with them. And in all of my fights with them, there was a time when I was sending them emails every day, ba, 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 when I was living by myself because they were persecuting me and living, leaving me abandoned. And in my emails, I would always talk about hellfire, hellfire, hellfire. When the Lord showed me my sister's attempt at, well, desire for suicide, I told her, 
I was angry in that email. I was like, I was like, on top of that, you there who wants to kill yourself because you are depressed about ABC. I saw in a dream you suddenly just diving into hellfire. And the Lord showed me that in that email, my sister was freaked out because she knew that she was planning to kill herself. And when I, in my anger, basically was like, she was like, whoa, my sister still doesn't believe in Jesus. But the Lord showed me that the reason why she did not finish off herself with suicide was because she was like, what if it's true? She's literally on some, hey, I'm not going to test it. I don't trust and believe in her God because why is her life so bad? She's a wicked and a perverse generation seeking after a sign. She's looking at my life, seeing my unanswered prayer and she's not running with it. But I've prophesied so accurately, random strange stuff in her life that she's like, hey, even if in and of herself, her God is kind of substandard. Bottom line is what she has said is true. So she stayed alive. She's pushing every single day because she is scared that hell might be real well she's out of the depression now but there was a time when she severely wanted to go at her own hand and she was stayed from doing that because the lord showed me her suicide ideation and her going to hell and i told it to her and she freaked out enough to not do it and you still think that the restrainer is not preventing people from dying my whole family is alive because of that there are people in my whole family and guys <laughs> No, it is not my whole immediate family that is alive because of me. Members of my extended family are alive because of me. My family are so involved in darkness. There is, There are two family members in particular in the youth. By youth, I mean my age, millennials, okay? Uh, not the elderly that have tried to sacrifice family members for success. Two of them, a girl and a boy, a male and a female. Both of them are my cousins. They have both tried to sacrifice someone in the family for success. And both their rituals have failed in this regard because of me so i have an uncle that is alive because of me because his daughter tried to sacrifice him i have a cousin that's alive because of me because her sister tried to sacrifice him i have uh an aunt and as well as a a baby like an a step not a step sorry like um not so much a cousin but a cousin's son that is alive today because his uncle tried to sacrifice him and i stood in the gap these people have no idea like they will one day find out my cousin, I had a dream of, of the male cousin in particular, grunting and groveling and complaining uh, in a shrine, some kind of a ritual setting, saying all of my spells fall like they, 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 they hit brick walls because of Karabo. They hit brick walls because of Karabo. I'm sick and tired of Karabo. So he recently tried to marry me off to some guy so I can be watered down. I, I spoke about that cousin about two or three days ago. Because the witchcraft that he's cast on me doesn't work. And he gets that. And so he has stopped trying. But he has also failed to sacrifice one of his, n is, when it's a boy, it's a nephew, ne? Yeah. He struggles to sacrifice a nephew in order to get his wealth. That's what's been going on. Like, hi. That's what's been happening. Last night, I dreamt about the death of uh, um, uh, the husband and the daughter of one of my cousins that's very heavy into satanic ritual worship. Again, stood on the gap. Stood on the gap. Like, since like this chick, she's been operating so loftily in the occult for so long. And the devil is just sick and tired of her. Um, and and he, he's now demanding, now that she has been in the occult for all of these years, a very deep satanic organization that she belongs to. They now are demanding the blood of her daughter, one of her daughters, and her husband. And she is unhappy. She is beside herself with sorrow over like this. She's like, no, I can't just give you my child. I can't just give you my husband. But what in the world? Yes, you get yourself involved in the occult and you think it's all hanky-dory and peaches until they demand that you bring them your mother's heart. Until they demand that you bring them your daughter's heart. So now that they want the daughter and the, the husband, she now wants out. But like, but they're going to pursue the living delights out of her until these people are dead. And the only person that has got any power at all to protect all three of those randos. Okay, minus the child. The child is innocent. She's not a rando. But the husband is a rando. And so too is the wife. Way too by a But they've now put the child in harm's uncomfortable way. Uh, all three of those people, they're literally in my hands. I'm standing in the gap for all of them. They're going to realize when the tribulation happens, just how much I stood in the gap for them. Because when the body of Christ is out, there's nobody standing in the gap now anymore for you, preventing a death curse from working. When I family, when I all over the show. Now when it's time for you to go and sacrifice three of your brothers, now you're crying. Now you're crying. Now you're crying. The body of Christ is able to stand in the gap for you in a way that the occult can't touch you. So I had to, this morning I was so angry when I woke up from that dream. I was like, But my heart bled for the child. The husband, both wife and husband are just crazy. They're both in the occult. 
but for the kid the kid for me was like ish you know made a sister that was a little bit uncomfortable and uneasy and feel like girl now this is just demonic if you'd say i'm ban in your show now won't give me fuzzy and then you can experience or let's take a look at one because you made my mom basically lose her own daughter as well so you you better lose your own now i can't i can't roll like that as a christian so i stood in the gap i stood in the gap for all of them that's what's good so the restrainer who is the holy spirit you must understand what we are doing here on this earth is a very important work and these people in the occult they always ensnare themselves with their wickedness and after uh, an anniversary of being in the occult for like 10 years or 15 years they then start to demand other things from you that you never exp expected that you would experience you lose family literally they tell you it's either your life or the life of your daughter or you are going to lose your career you're going to lose the things you gained through the occult you're going to lose your car everything is going to fall apart if you don't listen and they intimidate the living daylights out of them so the only way out is what a, a praying saint such that uh, they can't touch them putting a force field around family members that could not care less even about you so the least here on earth is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven you are literally putting an iron dome over your entire extended family and they don't even know it my cousin doesn't even know that i have rescued her son something like three times from her brother no clue but she keeps on pimpering me to my mom no idea no idea that if it was not for me, she would be a bereft mother who would have buried one of her sons because of her brother's greed for wealth. That's the kind of stuff that's going on. It, well, in African spirituality, but in the world at large. And yet you think that I'm the one here as Garabo that is in trouble. A wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign and they will not be given any such sign other than the sign of Jonah. You will gain the disappearance. Our prayers are not unanswered. God has given you a strong delusion. Our prayers are going to be answered eventually. Pray for a job, every prayer for a business, every prayer for a, an open womb, every prayer for a healed cancer, millennial reign. They are gonna live, they're gonna rise. The cancer will no longer be in their body. A, a, a pray, a, a gingy, prayers for a cure for HIV. They're gonna live. Disease-free bodies. A, a child whose future was just robbed from underneath their feet and they ended up HIV positive. Incorruptible bodies, no disease, no disease. Plus, on top of that, the Lord showed me some time ago that there will be a cure for HIV in the millennium. In the millennium. So even those people who don't have incorruptible bodies are going to be able to be free of the disease. There's going to be a lot of pioneering um, research that is done to cure people from the sorrows of this earth because it will no longer need to be so burdened and riddled with, with as much as before because Christ is now reigning. You will realize that you were foolish. But those who embrace the gospel, who take the truth on, they will realize that they were wise, like the five wise virgins. So please do not look at my unanswered prayer, wicked souls, and think yourselves ones who are prosperous because you've got a $2 million salary per annum being a witch. I mean, you're a strong delusion. This explanation ought to make you repent. If it doesn't, then angazi. I don't know. You have made me consider wearing an outfit to go to the garage. A heavy burden because you have so impoverished me and made me live in so much squalor that I've been wearing nothing but shorts and light shirts every day. Such that getting dressed up is now a chore. How is a woman supposed to recover from that? How is a woman that used to love fashion supposed to recover from that? I'm not. That's the thing. You've, you've endured me through so much trauma that there is no way I can ever live normally again on this side. The rapture is happening and I am going to live out the rest of my life in the millennial reign. But before it happens, I told you I'm getting an apartment. I'm getting all different like, yeah. So I don't know when it's happening, but I'm pretty sure it's not tomorrow. However, it is also, I don't know. I don't think it's in this feast of trumpets. People say it is um, type thing, but, uh, but I'm not the be all and end all of final authority. But I, when God gives me prophecy, I just speak. And based on what the Lord has shown me, I'm first going to have like a whole laptop. I'm going to have a whole apartment. I'm going to get raptured from a place where I am independent again. But I'm not getting married. Not yet. Not children. Not yet. Not on this side. I'm Methuselah. I'm having my babies then. I'm having my husband then. I'm getting my businesses then. I am getting my etc. But for now, all I need is a one-bedroom apartment and a cleared debt. That's what's good. Watch this space, guys. I warned you. My prayers are not unanswered. I'm just in the belly of a fish. I'm just in the heart of the earth. Because that's all the wicked just like that testimony of that young lady that survived hellfire because her mother interceded for her and the Lord had mercy. The Lord had compassion and brought that kid back. But that woman was poorer even than me. It is listening to testimonies of such saints, such people holding on to Jesus, even in the level of obscurity they're in. I realized that my life, my, my situation is, is nothing in comparison to many people across the world. I mean, when you live in one room, sit with five other people, 
and you still hold on to God? What are you doing when you've got blueberries and strawberries on your plate and muesli every single day committing suicide? Like, guys, seriously speaking, especially those that are trying to pursue me for suicide whenever it's panging and banging on my door afflicting me. I think about such stories as the one that I listened to today. Sleeping on the floor with three siblings, with your mom and your dad on a bed, and you're sick and you can't go to hospital, and yet you're holding on to Jesus. But Garabo is eating, like I said, strawberries and blueberries every single day. Hair is growing healthily. I am complaining about acne, but there are people who don't even have food on the table, but they're holding on to God. I am without excuse. I am going to hold on to my God in life until he catches me in the sky and I will meet him in the air and be with him forever. That's what's going to happen. And as for witches, you will keep on calling God our sky daddy. I will keep on wincing when you do that. And the day will arrive when you will either repent because you realize you're foolish or you will go to hell and realize that my goodness, the only person who could have gotten you out of there was the sky daddy. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Hope you've been edified. Bye.